It's good to be with you today, share a little bit of time together. And in our few moments together, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what do you do after Easter? It's now a week since we had Easter services. And of course, Easter is about Jesus' death and resurrection, that he rose from the dead. The only thing that really could follow something like that is to think about the purpose of Easter. And that is that we would be with Jesus. I looked in the book of Acts. It's kind of interesting. The apostles were kind of in that same position. Wondering what, what do we do after Easter? What do we do after Jesus rose from the dead? Well, it says in the book of Acts that Jesus talked with them and met with them. And he gave them instructions. And he presented himself to them. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. That's what he came to, to bring. And the kingdom of God is, is, that, is the end. It's the end of the story. He says, this is what I came for. This is why I died. This is why I rose. The apostle Paul later would write, he says, this Jesus rose that we would rise with him, that we would be together, that, that he would make all things right. I love the phrase that's used throughout scripture in many places that God says, in the restoration of, of us, in the restoration of Israel, in the restoration of all things, he said, I will be their God, and they will be my people. And we'll, we'll dwell together. It's the purpose of Easter, he says, is that we'll be together. And that happens at the end of the story. Aren't you glad we have that? He said, the end of the story is that Jesus comes. Uh, when we think about the end, there's a, a word that theologians use when they study that that's called eschatology and that really just means the study of the end and if we if we just think about that he says the end well there's a lot of details in the end right there's a lot of things and and the apostles wanted to know about that jesus told them don't leave jerusalem but wait for me he says i'm going to baptize you i'm going to fill you with the spirit i'm going to be with you and then it says that the disciples gathered around him and they said, Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom of, of Israel? So what are they looking for? Well, I think they're looking for details. Lord, give us a timeline. Lord, tell us, give us the map. Show us what's going to happen. What's going to happen when and where? And, and I love Jesus' answer. He says, it's not for you to know times or dates that the Father has set. It's not, for you to, it's not for you to figure out just times and dates and for you to, to have it all figured out. He says, but you are to be my witnesses. You are to live for me right now, today. And, and we, we don't know timing and, and maybe we don't know every detail. And there's a lot of, of theories. There's a lot of things that as we read God's word that he gives us hints and he gives us clues and he, he tells us some things, but we don't even understand all of it. And, and we, may, we could get bogged down in, in details and say, well, what do you believe about this? And I don't know if you've been around, I've been around people that they are so involved in just trying to figure out, well, this person is the Antichrist and this person does that and, and this is what's going to happen next and that. And it's good to know those things, but sometimes we get so bogged in them and we get so um, fascinated by them that we miss out on Jesus' point. And Jesus said, it, you don't have to worry about that. In fact, in Matthew chapter 24, He's sharing details again with the disciples. They said, when, he said, this temple is going to be torn down. And of course, he's talking not just the temple, but his body. And he says, and they said, when are these things going to happen? And Jesus shares with them some details of the, of the end times. He shares with them some of those things. Not the easiest passage to understand what things have already happened, what things are still to happen. But one of the things that he said to them in, in that passage was he said, no one knows the hour or the day. And maybe we can say it this way, no one knows the details. No one has every part of it figured out. But he said, therefore, be ready. You know, the end is that Jesus is coming. That's the end. The end is he says, I'm coming for you and I want you to be ready. So we may not know every detail. I, I love the, the 
vision that God gave to Daniel of the of the um, or to King Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, that Daniel interpreted for him about the statue. And he says, there's, there's going to be these kingdoms. And he says, the first one is gold. And of course, that was Nebuchadnezzar. And then, and then it goes on. And we're talking about the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks and the Romans. And he says, here's these great empires. But then the last one was very special. He says, it was from a stone cut out and a rock that came down. And you know what it did? It crushed all the others. All the others were blown away like chaff. They were just nothing. And he says, you know what? The kingdom is here. The kingdom is near. It's, it's coming. I don't know every detail, but I do know this. He says, when you recognize that the end is coming, I am coming back for you. That will change the way you live now. And that changes the way we live in, of course, relationships. We, we recognize that, that they're precious, that they're the things that, that will remain. We, we recognize that in the, the things that we do, in, in, in our possessions, that, that those things don't matter. I, I think about the early church and, and what did they do? Well, they sold possessions and they, they shared and they, they did those things because they knew the end is near. I don't need those things. And, and even if you lived a good old life, and even if you make it even past 100, you know what happens? He says, you're going to die unless you have your faith in Jesus. Then, even if you die, you'll live forever. He says, I want you to be looking for me. I want you to be looking for my return. I want you to be waiting for me. And, and we think about the end and we study the end. And, and it's, it's good to, to think about some of those details and, and to think about, you know, what's coming next. But the most important thing is that he says, be ready and be watching for me. Let that change the way you think about God. He says, I've got a plan for you. That I'm coming again. That it's, this is not just God making things up as it goes. He says, I... I I planned for us to be together. And I want you to be waiting for that. Boy, and that makes us praise God, doesn't it? Say, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you're coming again. And that gives us endurance and that gives us hope as we go through our life today. We say, Lord, I know that I, I have struggles. I know there's things that are happening. Paul talked about all the things that they were going through and feeling like they were really dead, that they, that they were dying. And he said, and none of those things compare. They're all temporary compared to knowing that I'm going to be with Jesus, to knowing that I'll be with him eternally. And he says, I want you to remember that. Part of communion is, he says, remember this until I come again. Remember what it's about. It's about us being together. And so as we think about it, as we think about the end times, as we think about those things, it's not trying to figure out details. It's longing to be with our Lord. It's looking for that day. It's letting it change the way we live today. It's letting it change our priorities and our heart, our relationships. Would you pray with me today as we look for his coming? Lord, we... Thank you that we can think about the end and know that it's good news. Know that that's the purpose of Easter. And as excited as we were about Easter and, and your resurrection, Lord, it's because that you said that we would be with you. And we long for that returning. Lord, we're so anxious. Lord, we need you. Help us, Lord, to put our trust in you. Help us to, to endure because we know, Lord, you're, you're with us and we know that you said you're coming again we know that your kingdom is here and your kingdom is coming Lord we want to be a part of that thank you for your promises thank you for hope thank you for the end of the story amen well God bless you today just pray you be looking for him Remembering what's more important than Easter, the reason of Easter, that we would be with him. He says, I, this is what Easter's about. This is the purpose, that we would be with him 
that he would be our God and we would be his people. God bless you.